Welcome, Welcome to Unhinged Magi. How are y'all doing today? Are you having a good time? I hope so. Me too. I really do. And you know what happened? Well, I don't know if it was last time or the time before last or the time before last that. We, we made a video. It was we did. crazy. About and flesh I, and blood. Yep. And I pulled data off a TCG player app and everyone said, <gasps> No! How God! dare you? That's going to make everyone really pissed off. I know, right? Because look, like there's not enough data on TCG player. Yeah. So you're obviously a market manipulator trying to shice people. It is. It's got to be that, right? Because I only have a small subset of data of a popular actual place where people go shopping. Yep. Because it was there and it exists. You know what you can't do? You can't go to Channel Fireball and say, hey, how many boxes did you sell? You can't go to Star City Games and say, hey, you remember last quarter? How many boxes did you sell? Yep. You can't do that. That doesn't happen. They're going to call, they're going to hang up on you. There's probably data out there that exists that people have access to. I don't have access to that. And I don't know what it is. That doesn't mean that I've done no market research whatsoever, but I mean, yeah, if people are to say, Edwin, you don't know about flesh and blood. All you know is magic. I'm not going to actually argue that too much. I mostly know magic. That's, that's actually true. But do I have no attention to flesh and blood? No, I do. I do pay yep, yep. attention to it to some degree. And I do think the community is missing a few concepts. Oh, yes. They are definitely missing a few concepts. But having a small subset of data is actually just fine for actual data. Now, if I was comparing TCG player data to eBay data, well, then... Well, that would maybe. be apples to oranges. Yeah. But I was comparing TCG player data to TCG player data. That's right. And that's when it actually becomes viable, even if it's a small subset. Yep. So the sample size is in fact small. Yep. And that doesn't mean that your conclusions are wrong. It means that Correct. they're less reliable, which Correct. is true. Which is that true. is a 100%. valid point. Valid. However, the conclusions that we came to, I do stand by. It does seem to be the same story I see reflected in other places. Correct. And everyone has said, we should ask the other whales that actually, you know, buy flesh and blood and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I have what, 63 cases of crucible. Yeah. I so, have over 200 boxes of Tales of Art. You, sir, are a whale. Nah, I can't be one. No, you're right? a whale. I would never pay attention to data that I have lots of stuff in. So <laughs> we, when I said the whales and the investors are checking out, I didn't obviously mean all of them. Are there, are there some that are remaining committed? Of course. Duh. Of, of course. Yes. But are there a lot that did? I would say yes. yes and I is. would say that... This isn't just like a, an opinion thing. This is like where the market basically bears this out. And also, I, I want to call out that uh, many of these people that like responded in the comments and said, oh, you, you're totally wrong because I bought a thousand boxes myself or a thousand cases. They did not buy them at pre-release prices. They waited in for, for the crash to happen and then they bought it. And then in my mind, that's exactly confirming what I'm talking about. They knew that those pre-release prices were too high because they were bearish and they waited until they crashed. Then they went in and scooped them up cheap. Exactly. So I think that that's actually not in contradiction to what I said. I think that's no, exactly in agreement with what it's I said. exactly in agreement. Yep. yep. And, and then, then, we, it, then people were asking if we actually talked to anybody. Well, well we, we do talk to do. people. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, they usually say this. Okay. I'll tell you, but you can't tell anybody. And you can't. I mean, otherwise, you don't get any information at all. Yep. And that's that's one of the hidden truths of anything that we do. <laughs> yep. So now, not only does, like, us two crazy jerks actually believe these theories that we're putting out there. That Just flesh, wait. Just that, wait. This is awesome. And, and to quickly summarize for anyone, the, the theory is that flesh and blood is currently overprinted. It's oversupplied. That doesn't mean the game is bad. That nope. doesn't mean it's going to fail. Nope. What we basically said in a nutshell was that it's now not on the collectors investors whether or not the game succeeds. It's on the players hands. Correct. And to be clear, we want the game to succeed. I love the game Flesh and Blood. I think it's fantastic. I do want it to stand the test of time. Yep. I have a lot of boxes in it. I'm I'm worried that if they overprint it What's going to happen is they're going to remove the ability for the distribution chain to make money, the LGSs and the distributors. Correct. And they will start to not want to take it, which suddenly has a chain effect that goes down the whole thing. 
and eventually starts decreasing the print and starts making it hard to find and then people start getting frustrated. There's a whole situation that can happen yep. if you oversupply the market and destroy any level of confidence. And I don't want that to happen. And that means that it'll ha start having a reduction in player base. Yep. If players go down. And then when you have a reduction in player base, that means less things get sold. Yep. That means it won't stand the test of time. That's what we're trying to say. So, so let's have a little bit of There's sense possibilities. here. And let's not shoot the messenger. Our message is not that we want flesh and blood to fail. Correct. Our message is, here's a problem. Let's identify it. Let's talk about it. And let's try as a collective community to make sure that this problem that actually exists doesn't persist because exactly. we want it to, to this game to actually go. Yeah, I think we all want it to succeed. I think that was the general consensus of all the comments. Now, you know what? Who actually also agrees with us? Who? It just so happens Mr. Rudy from Alpha Investments actually agrees with us. So yes. what you guys see on the screen here, this is actually, <clears throat> it's part of Rudy's Patreon message that he sent out very recently, actually. And this is one real huge benefit of being a patron of Rudy's. Now, we did ask him you know, before we even shot this video if we could yeah. use this as yeah. data. Yeah, I, I literally like sent him a message and said, can I talk about this? And he said yes. So I'm not breaking any rules here. So what you see on the screen is what Rudy just recently said to people about his take on what's going on with flesh and blood. Now, of course, I'm sure some people are going to be like, oh, well, Rudy's evil. And so if you guys agree with him, you must be terrible also. So again, if people take that perspective, I mean, I, I'm not going to like sit here and try and argue it. Like, I don't think Rudy's is evil. I think he tells people what he's doing. He goes out and he buys and sells stuff. He doesn't try to hide anything. There's the, the three and he tells you what he, he thinks. Yeah. He's not telling you what he doesn't think. Right. There's no manipulation with Rudy. Like when people go to sell him stuff too cheap, and you shouldn't sell stuff that cheap. <laughs> when people go to him and, and sell stuff to him too cheap, he literally will tell people, you probably shouldn't sell me this stuff, but if you're going to, okay, I'll buy it. You guys, you seriously can't fault that. If right. the people want to sell him stuff below market price, that's their own call. And if he's telling them it's below market price, then that's even better. The problem would come in if he actually tried to buy things at a lower price and didn't tell people. If he was trying to I'm lie. Give you a great price. Here's 60 bucks for your black lotus. Yeah, try to talk him down like, oh, what you have here is garbage. No one's going to give you anything for it. But tell you what, I'll be your best friend and give you this much for it. That would be different. So anyways, let's go into like what he actually said here a little bit. The player base continues to grow at a strong play pace. The organized play and pro tour continues to be a huge driver in most stores carrying the product. Investors remain bearish and unwilling to move large amounts of money into cold foils and sealed product. The problem is if the secondary market continues to stabilize and starts to uptick, we could start seeing huge upticks in prices since most whales are now sitting on the sidelines watching. That sounds familiar. Where did we hear familiar. that? I don't know. I can't, I can barely, I think it echoes in this room somehow. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly what we said. Now, did we sync with Rudy or some manipulated thing behind it? No, we didn't. And again, I'm saying that's what the data actually says. If you look at all the sealed box prices and all the singles prices, they've been going down quite a bit for a while. And that tells a story unto itself. In fact, like I actually disagreed with Rudy when I was talking to him. He, I was talking to him about the prices of like Monarch and he was like, well, Edwin, we don't know what the print supply is on Monarch. So, you know, you can't say it's overprinted yet. And I actually disagreed with him and I said, well, Rudy, yes, you can. If it wasn't overprinted, the price probably wouldn't be dropping. So Correct. the fact that the price is dropping actually is data that seems to indicate that it was overprinted because supply and demand is having time to work itself out. Wow. And yeah. then that, that demand all just, just started coming started down, down because there was just too much supply. Yep. And he used to be buying them at $200 a box. Right? He was, actually. And so now it's getting a much, it's get actually fallen below that, right? Yeah, I think it's been stabilizing around like 150 for Monarch First Edition or something yeah. like that. And I think it creeps back up periodically and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I mean, he has a vested interest in mm -hmm. wanting that to go back up because as the world knows, he bought it at a much higher price. Of course. But, you know, like, I mean, yeah, we don't agree with Rudy on everything that we say that he says, but I respect what Rudy says. He's honest about the things that he says. I stand by Rudy because, like, not because I always agree with him, but because he's honest about what he actually does with it. And so I don't think he's like this evil person that people make him out to be. 
So are they still making him out to be an evil person? Well, there's some people out there that and I'm sure they're going to make this claim since we're kind of like, yeah, we agree with Rudy. They're probably going to throw that label on us. So you evil jerk. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you guys can pause. You can read what's on the screen here, what Rudy says about flesh and blood. But I just wanted to call out the fact that we effectively agree with like what he said. And that's exactly what we were saying in the video. And again, the market price, not Edwin's opinion, the market price is what seems to be saying this. Yep. And box sales that seem to be saying the exact same thing. The whales have left. Yep. It's just a player base now. Yep. There are people that are buying boxes in large amounts, but they're buying it at the bottom of the market. Which That's, is the best thing to do, by the way. Yeah. Actually, now is a good time to go out and buy Everfest first edition, actually. Well, yeah, yeah. That's actually, that's actually a good point. And if you're going to buy it, you should buy it from TCG Player because it helps out the channel. Yep. And but, we actually have a TCG Player affiliate link below, by the way. If you click true. on it, we'll get a tiny little kickback. It won't cost you any more. It'll help the channel. So exactly. if you do that, thank but you. But yeah, Everfest is actually at the bottom. You can actually tell that it hasn't shrunk anymore. I've, the lowest I've seen it is 79. He put 78 up yeah. there. But yeah. Yeah, there's a huge resistance at the map pricing point. Yeah. That, that's where there's like a lot of market resistance. Exactly. Yep. And so, yeah, that seems to be where everybody wants to be hanging on. So, hanging on for dear life. What Rudy actually said in this in this thing is he said he expected it to eventually start going up to like 150 each within a year. Uh, well, I don't honestly know within if I agree with that. a year or two, right? No, let's see. You, they can't see it on the screen anymore. That's Monarch. Oh, that's the Monarch there, the Flesh and Blood Everfest. One to two 12 years. months. One to two years, he says. Yeah, okay, he did say one to two years. Yeah. But I expect Everfest to be 150 a box in 12 months. See, I, I don't, I disagree with that. Yeah. But only because I think there's a plethora. <laughs> That's a big fancy word, meaning there's way too much. Yeah. Maybe it might hit the hundred dollar box at December. But, maybe. But notice and that's a big maybe. Notice that Rudy's opinion was based on the fact that he believes that they're not going to do unlimited print of of Everfest. And if, if they don't, in fact, do an unlimited print, then I, I might actually jump on board with them and say, yeah, maybe 150 a box in 12 months, maybe. But if they do an unlimited print... But that would mean that there's a bunch of players, brand new players coming into the actual market, right? Because collectors will just watch. And if it starts peaking up, then they'll come in and start chomping. Maybe, yeah. But I don't think they're going to buy out the market because there's way too much product. Yeah, it would be very hard to buy out the product because there's a lot of it legitimately yeah. but anyways yeah so my personal opinion is if if they decide to continue doing unlimited i don't think everfest is going to be 150 in 12 months but if they do not do unlimited print of everfest then yeah maybe it could be yeah because tales of aria is still hovering around unlimited range so anyways yeah that's basically the video we're responding to the comments we got and then you guys are evil true, true. well maybe not i'm evil maybe just you're evil yeah probably i'm just evil yeah just him i did look up the data Yep. <laughs> Only TCG player, you terrible person. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Love to see your comments below. Thanks a lot for tuning any, in. Any comment. We don't care which way you go, whichever you want, direction you want. Any comment is just fine. It just means you're enjoying the show. Even if you disagree with us, put the comments in. Even if you don't like what we're saying, put the comments in. Just put the comments in. You're doing great. Okay. Thank you for the, all the comments. Okay. All of them. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.